a little bit to get started. Uh, etiquette, try to keep your mic off unless you're asking a question. Uh, try, you know, get your space prepared and ready so that you can, uh, you know, easily get up and down. You might need a chair for assistance to do that. You uh, may need to move a few things around. Uh, remind you that this is a live broadcast, and if your image is up and showing, it may be transmitted. It will be transmitted. And it may also be used in some promotional materials after the fact. So, just like to get that out there so everybody knows. This, and to remind you that this is very much a work at your own pace situation. We, in our work, are trying to find your threshold of where your body's total strength tolerates what we're putting to it and start to make your whole body stronger. So we got to find that threshold. We'll talk about it as we go through the stuff today and uh, we'll get dialed into that a little bit better. So we're going to start, as usual, with our awakening the base, right? And then awaken the base, what we're trying to do is to take a quiet moment to really get in touch with the fundamentals of that base position because there's many elements to it and it's complex until it starts to automate in your body. And those elements are feeling that first knuckle of your big toe firm on the floor. So if this were my foot, this were my big toe, it's the first knuckle of the big toe. Okay, feeling that in contact with the floor and gripping, right? And you're going to be in a lying position, not standing, but the second element is the pelvic tilt. And that is not standing with your back excessively arched and getting the abdominals and pelvic muscles in control of that structure and holding on to it and not just letting all the tension in your body and gravity have its way with you, okay? And the last element is chin to throat, right? Drawing that chin in and flattening it a little bit. So everybody's going to get into their uh, supported position, which for most of you is going to be on the floor. For those of you who have difficulty getting up off and down from the floor, you can be on your couch or even sitting in a chair, okay? And <clears throat> give you a second to get down there. And we want this time with the breath, right? When you're making a movement, you're exhaling. When you're recovering from a movement, you're inhaling. When you start a movement, you start with a big fresh inhale. So everybody in position there, let's go ahead and get a big inhale. And we are going to begin. feature Tiffany there for everybody to get a little look at what this is all about. That might be helpful for them. Notice it's just a gentle rotation of the pelvis. Her body isn't shifting up and down. Her hips aren't lifting up off the floor. It's just a flattening of the back. Combined with that foot grip, thighs are parallel and firm. Pelvic tilt comes on. Let's follow this one with a chin to throat. Drawing that neck flat toward the deck a little bit. Breathing, releasing. You want to feel those inner thighs doing a little bit of work to hold those thighs parallel. Right? <clears throat> so your thigh makes a triangle. You want the middle of that triangle parallel to the middle of the triangle on your opposite side, if that's not too complex. From hip is the wide part of the triangle, the knee is the point of the triangle. There's a line right down the middle of it. That's the line we're talking about. All right, a few more breaths there. I'm sorry for those of you that like the sound of the gong. I did not put my headset mic on this morning, so you're probably not hearing it as clearly. But we're 
We're going to give you one last big breath. Fill the lungs. When you empty that breath, you're just going to get heavy on the floor. Melting into the floor. When you're in this position, you can really start to feel what is tight and what is not. You can start to feel that there's more pressure on one shoulder than the other, or one hip than the other. Maybe it's easier to keep your big toe down on one side. These are all very important elements to our core foundational control. All right, we're going to come up out of that now. All right, and a few bicycles. And butterflies. Again, for those of you not familiar, butterflies is a simple opening and closing of the knees with them bent. Bicycles is to make the motion as if you were riding a bicycle with your feet pointed toward the ceiling, not the wall out in front of you. If you're sitting, then you're pumping your knees in place. Purposefully, nice clean lines. Alrighty. Hey, it looks like everybody's getting up there. We're gonna go into our first exercise, the ever important towel curl. Sam's gonna queue up a video of that for us, which is gonna be very self-explanatory. And if everybody's ready, whenever you're ready, Sam, we can let that roll. So right now, what we see is make really quick little grabs. However, what I want you to do is I want you to concentrate on exaggerating the movement dramatically. Mm -hmm. When you pick up your foot, I want you to picture all of your toes splaying open. Mm -hmm. When you reach out, I want you to picture yourself reaching way out as far as you can go, getting the tips of the toes down all nice and clean without the rest of the foot touching, and then really just pull in deep and give it a squeeze and then let it go and start all over again. So squeeze and then release it up. It's not gonna make a big difference in the overall look of things, but it makes a big difference in turning. Squeeze the heck out. If you cramp, you get bonus points. So that's essentially what we're gonna be working on. Um, so you wanna, be in a sitting position and have something that you can curl in with your toes. That can be a towel. I see Angela sitting on yoga mats there. You can towel, you can curl in a yoga mat. There she is. And uh, the curling is going to be harder if the towel is on the yoga mat because it presents friction. A bare wood surface is the easiest. Carpet's a little harder. Something like a yoga mat makes it even harder. Levels of difficulty. All right. And we're going to go into the exercise. And this is one Tiffany's pretty familiar with. So uh, we're going to throw over into towel curls with Tiffany. Hey, guys. So I'm using a dish towel here. You can use a smaller towel if uh, your feet are a little weaker. But this is the standard. I say everyone start with this one. Um, if this one's too easy, we can always move on to a bigger length towel, full length. But as you saw in the video, you're going to keep your other leg planted and you're just going to focus on this kind of ankle and foot motion of one foot. You don't want anything else to be moving. So everything else is stable. Remember your pelvic tilt here. You don't want to be slouching. Stay upright. So you're going to pick up your foot as far as you can. Uh, spread out all your toes, really feel that, and then slowly go down with the tips, grab the towel, pull it towards you, and then really hold on to that contraction there. Lift up slowly, keep at it like that. But you really wanna be intentional with this motion and really feel each squeeze. The placement and the release are really important. They will help you get through the towel more efficiently. 
and keep. Uh, sorry, just one more thing I just like to. Uh, sometimes people tend to do is move their knee around, and so that comes back into place with pelvic tilt. It's keeping that stability here. So if you see it shaking, it means you're working, you know. But yeah. don't let it flare out or flare in. She's given us an excellent uh, sample there of what the, the exercise is. And she's getting to the point right now, it's kind of a crucial point where the towel is kind of bunching up. We're going to let her go until that towel stops filling under her foot. Until like she can't clump any more towel under there at all. And that's part of the work. You really want to work to get as much towel under your foot as possible because that's when it's the most challenging, is when it's kind of compacted in there. And she's still coming. Look at that. She might get the whole towel in one foot, and that would be a tremendous improvement, wouldn't it, Tiff? Oh, yeah. I don't think you've ever done whole towel in one without having to pull it through. I don't think I have. I don't know if I can. This is, you're, you're seeing history made here, folks. <laughs> And the push me to do it. It's okay, the closest we've see. had to an athletic event in months. <laughs> Good. Bring it. You're almost there. You're almost there. Okay. We're going to say you could do it, but we do have to demonstrate. So you're going right. to tip up on your toes and pull all the excess towel out and then just finish from there. Great. Now, I, re I remember when we started this, she, we would pull the towel to, through two or three times during mm -hmm. getting one, set, one, one length of towel done. Right. She's probably even close to ready to graduate into a bigger towel because no matter how much work she does with the small towel, it won't be enough. Right. All right. So with that, she's going to start her other foot, and I'm going to go into the gallery and see what folks are up to. Anybody want to share your towel curling with me? You see, Angela's going full beach towel there. She is not messing around. There you go. Slow. I would say Ange, just slow it down a little bit. I saw a great uh, little face on uh, Matthew's window up there, so I know he's doing it. Looks like he may be bordered on a cramp a little bit. Yeah, Matthew, let your feet fall directly under your knees. Not so much back toward your body. There, a little bit out even more. There you go. And then start all over with the edge under your toes in that position. There you go. Looking at Sam. Angela's got the beach towel. Sam is going to the beach. I love the improvisation there with the jacket. That is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Claudia, how are you doing? It's good to see your smiling face, even if I can't see you doing your towel curls. Thank you for joining us today. You're muted. There you go. I'm doing okay. That's actually, I always had a sock on before, so now I'm, I feel like it's working okay. All right. Good. Little steps. That's the way we progress. Little steps. Get a little bit better at something each day. All right. And I would say everybody's good there. I don't know if everybody was working while Tiffany was doing her first foot, but go ahead and switch and get some time in on the second foot, if you will. Uh, I'm noticing one thing there with uh, Mr. St. Peter in the corner. Mr. St. Peter number two in the corner there <laughs> is... Uh, your foot is turned out a little bit. There you go. Get that ray of the second toe going straight back toward the ankle. And as you're lifting and reaching and grabbing, try not to let that line deflect in or out. Is there any reason why you can't do two at the same time? Do you have to do them? Uh, because it's hard enough to pay attention and do one right at first. Okay. You can graduate to two as you gain mastery. Okay. But, you know, by the time you've gained mastery on this and you can do it really well, your foot will be feeling so much better, too. And you'll have so much less of the constriction that you started with that, you know, you can just do two every once in a while, do a set, a full length towel, both feet, and it gives you what you need to maintain, you know. It doesn't always have to be this concentrated, but this is an entry level class where everybody's getting started. So we really want to hammer on these details. 
All right, and from there, let's, uh, t uh, Sam, if you want to show us Tiffany and let her show us how to roll those ankles out and kind of get the shake out going for the feet. I was just going to ask, what do you do when you get a cramp? Uh, when you get a cramp, you shake it out. You maybe stand up and do a calf stretch, which we're going to go into a little bit later. You do something to interrupt and allow some blood to flow because the cramp is basically a muscle being put to a very high demand of work and not having the resources. Like oftentimes the cramp happens and there's uh, not enough calcium present for that contraction to let go. Because that's it's part of the chemical process of release okay. of the contraction. All right. So, how many people got cramps? Good, Matthew. A plus for the day when you get a cramp. Cramp is just right. We're working out. We're doing contractions to condition our muscles. A cramp is a full-on uncontrolled contraction. So, it's kind of like more than you can generate voluntarily yourself. With that said, foot shaken out, we're done. Now we're going to go to that freshly invigorated foot, and we're going to go to our ball rolling. So it's time to get your small, firm ball. And if you're on a smooth floor in a big room, this is where the box comes in. Put the ball in the shoe box, and you don't chase it all over the room. If you're on a carpet or a mat or something, it's less likely to take off on you. All right, um, Tiffany is featured, so we're all good to go there. <clears throat> Tiff, why don't you uh, take the folks into this process for us here? Sure. So here's my box, the shoe box. Um, I am working on a hardwood floor, so the ball could roll away for me. Um, I'll demonstrate first without the box, but you would just do the same thing that we're about to do, but inside of the box, you would where we're going to work on our ball rolling. So it, will, it won't, uh, won't slide away or roll away. But I have a little cross ball here. Um, kind of want to show you guys, you know, we're not just kind of going at this flimsy and kind of just rolling around. Like there's intention to this ball rolling. So think of your foot as like a grid here. So you can go up and down from toes to heel. And it's not just one line, you know, like start closer to your, the ball of your foot, the instep, and then slowly work your way towards the outer. And we can also go transverse. So we could kind of go around the toes, back and forth here, really work on the ball here, get to the arches, but kind of just going in this direction. And then the last leg, you can kind of see that we can, we can use our knee, we can use our body to really grind on a spot when we find it. So you can use a rotating motion and just remember to go slow and have intention. And we're gonna start seated. It's uh, not as much pressure. Uh, the way you can level up your pressure is by adding your hand stacked on top of your knee and adding the pressure that way. Um, and then we can also stand up, which I'll show you guys after we do a little bit down here. So I'm gonna start with the right foot. And I'm going to start by my big toe, and I'm going to kind of work my way towards my heel. And you can see Sam going out over there. Sam, just slow your process down a little bit. Find that spot and rest. As you're rolling, you're going to find spots that you can tell really need some help. It's okay to stop in the middle of that line and work on that spot. Right, the quick flashing motions will not get the tissue regeneration going that we need. You really need some sustained pressures in there. And I would like to take a moment right here, an unscheduled break, to say hello to Tehran on Facebook. Tehran is a woman I know, she lives in Ghana. And she's probably in Ghana watching this with some kids right now and having fun. So I just want to take a minute on Facebook to welcome her. She doesn't have the Zoom, so she follows us on Facebook. And I really appreciate you doing so and hope you are well there. She may uh, chat in and I'll check on that in a bit, maybe. All right, back to foot rolling. 
Tiff, what you been at it a minute? You feeling anything you want to make note of? Um, I just want to make note that you might have to move your leg because once you get to the bot, like I found, found myself starting at the toe and then I kind of got out here and I couldn't really get the pressure. So you'll have to move your ball a little bit and move it closer to you. So then you have that pressure from your knee directly down. So it's okay if it's, if you're doing, moving it around. Let's get back to your spot. Oh, Sam's got a billiard ball there, man. That's like uh, some huevos. That is one hard ball. All right. And Tiff, if you want to bring them to standing up now, they've probably, if you're getting well challenged in the seated position, there is no need to stand up. If you want a little bit more, go ahead and stand up. You'll be able to get some grind on it. All right. So I'm just going to turn my chair around because I like having this as a, stabilizer. I'm going to continue on my right foot just because I haven't really gone across yet. So oof, yeah, a little more pressure here. I mean, it's better to, you don't want to be far out like this. Bring the chair close to you. Don't make it difficult. And just sink into it. Um, another tip is you kind of see how my foot is like curved over the ball. I'm trying to relax the muscles. You don't really want to be like this, all contracted and flexed. Try to breathe and do it and let it roll and kind of melt over the ball. A yeah, good general rule when you're stretching and grinding, you want to be melting. You want to be letting whatever it is you're working on relax and just like I had you melt into the floor earlier, the key would be feel your foot melt around the ball. All right. Does anybody have any questions, concerns, or commentary from their ball rolling so far? Sorry to interrupt whoever it is I'm interrupting. I have a question, Mark. All right. So I know you're saying that it should be relaxed and I should wrap my foot around the ball, but I feel like I, I keep noticing that I'm lifting my toes like this. Okay. That's just a reflex action. Take a little concentrated effort on your standing leg. Get your standing leg really well placed so that you can hold your body weight. And then your standing leg is holding your body weight. And what you're doing with your other leg on the ball is a separate function. I feel and then, And then when you feel your toes jack up, take a breath, let them relax down. Right? No, I think so, you're right. Like not having my hip um, stable from this side was making me want to support my, you know, right. feel like that, I Yeah, that's what I saw immediately. You're kind of sort of le almost pivoting your weight over onto the ball right, exactly. rather than controlling it. So that, that was a good one. Okay, thank you. All right. I, somebody else was trying to get in a little bit earlier. So whoever that was, come on in. Um, I wanted to ask, um, I don't have a ball in my apartment. Is there something else I can use to, to put pressure on my foot? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to some kind of small ceramic ramekin flipped upside down, some kind of cooking utensil spoon or a measuring spoon that might be rounded, uh, anything that's about that size and has a rounded feature to it. I think maybe last a time, oh, go ahead. Last time, maybe uh, <laughs> say <laughs> Tiffany <laughs> first. Let's go <laughs> Tiffany first, then Sam. Sorry, my connection is very poor. Um, uh, Dave, he used um, the edge of a dumbbell. Yes. He used the heavy part. That was kind of a rounded thing, but okay, Sam. <laughs> Sam, it's to you. I was saying maybe a cup or a you know a coffee mug or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the early phases. In the early phases, your foot tends to be more sensitive and tender, and a bigger, broader, not so hard surface is good. And then as you progress on it, you get right down to the golf ball, and you're just really putting your 
you're all into it and it feels good. Whereas when you start out, the golf ball is just owie. All right, so that is ball rolling. We're going to come on out of ball rolling now, and we are going to move into some standing calves. So back to the foot rolling and the ankle shaking and getting all the yayas out, and we're going to get ourselves ready for standing calves. Sam's going to cue us up a video here, and we'll start with that real quick. Not yet quite Sam. Give folks a minute to gather looks ready from what I can see pay attention most in this to alignment ankle knee hip shoulder hips level and parallel chin to throat is on pelvic tilt is in place look for those cues as we run this video thank you Sam All right, see the heel on the floor straightens it right out all those curves are gone it's a nice powerful line you push and you kind of drive force into the heel you want to maintain the effort for two full minutes every 15 to 30 seconds a little bit of resistance is going to give way you'll be able to go deeper into the stretch so with that it is back to tiffany setting up for us there in her bright sunny living room all right so i'm using a doorway here you can also use just a wall but you want to have your hands to be directly uh, underneath your shoulders so find a spot and do just like we did in our video we're going to split the legs and we're trying to stretch this back leg that calf there so I'm going to read, I was kind of high, so I'm going to move this lower. And think about your chin to throat, your pelvic tilt. Think about this leg. And so you have your ankle, your knee, and your hip, shoulder all in line. And you are the, you are the plank. And then once established, that plank simply tilts forward. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's, Good point of focus is the heel, and Tiffany can talk to us a little bit about driving the heel through and the heel floating and how you deal with all that. All right. So there's two ways to further your stretch. One way is to bend your elbows. You know, right now I'm still, still easing into the stretch. Uh, now it's a good time, actually. We can get Sam to start a timer for us. Um, let's do 90 seconds. And cool. Thanks, Dan. Right now I'm feeling it all in my calf and I feel like I've been going about 25 seconds. So I'm going to scooch my heel back. That's another way to increase. So right now my heel is floating just a little bit. It's not in contact. For 30 seconds, I'm going to work on pushing and driving that heel into the ground. And that's going to further the stretch. And that is the, where your mind's eye needs to be, is pushing that heel, driving it into the ground. Now I got contact, still feeling the stretch, breathing into it, checking our pelvic tilt. Sam, Sam, will you let me know uh, where we're at right now? 36 seconds left. All right, okay. and if, you are, if, you, if your heel is floating up and not on the floor, and you're trying to put it down, and in 30 seconds it doesn't budge, you're a little overextended. You probably want to bring your foot in closer and ease the stretch a little bit and start with the heel in contact. Right. We're in the final push here, breathing. Focus on your breathing. Focus on releasing and melting. All the force is coming from your upper body. Your calf That's is relaxed. Nine right there, Mark. All right. Then watch Tiffany pump her foot as she comes out of that. Right, she's pumping her foot and legs, shaking it out. Mm -hmm. And then we will be switching to the other side for a little more of the same medicine. All right. 
switch it up. Keep those feet parallel. Remember the second toe, that is your second ray. And that's the one you want to be straight and want to be parallel. Get your hands positioned. You see right now I'm kind of bowing. You don't want that. We also don't want this for our plank, ear, shoulder, hips, knees, ankle. <sighs> sort of breathe into that. Hold the tilt, chin to the throat. Hey, and just stand to start that 90. And then just melt into oh. it. Once you establish that position, it's all about the melting. We got a new viewer on Facebook, Mr. Rick Keen. I'd like to welcome you, Rick. And Tehran is, in fact, watching with the kids. Would love to see a picture of that, Tehran, if you have a camera there. Um, and if you're just joining us, we're doing a calf stretch. Jump on in. And I'm going to cut, pull myself back here and let Tiffany go back into some descriptive terminology that will improve your calf stretching. So I'm going to inch my heel back a little bit. Now it's getting a little bit out of the shot here. Now it's floating. Now for 30 seconds, this is sort of my test. Can I get it to the ground within 30 seconds without hurting myself? <laughs> And if not, and don't push yourself too hard, just let it happen naturally, you know, breathe this into a, it. This is a great place boundaries. to, yeah, sorry about that, Tiff, there, a little delay. Um, this is a great place to di insert a discussion of threshold, like I spoke of earlier. Uh, you, when your heel is floating and you want to get it down, you really want to get it down, but you don't want to push it so hard that it's going to go boing, 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 and you'll have problems for weeks. You want to feel and be conscious and have your mind inside that calf muscle and really feeling what's happened, happening That's and finding your threshold. 30 there, Mark. Okay, that was 30 left. That's a minute, that's 90 seconds, we're done. All right, so, all right, so that leg is done. Great work out there, folks. Thank you, Tiffany. As you can see, she is shaking it out, and walking it off ever diligently. And that is our standing calves demo. Okay, um, we got. I want to. We're gonna take a little uh, transition now from stretching into probably our most difficult to instruct standing exercise that there is, because everybody's used to big moving exercises. This is an ex exercise that's about being still and stabilizing, and it's called walking person, okay? So first we're gonna start with a video of walking person, and that's gonna give you the gist of it. And I will talk through the details as we go through that. And Sam, I'm ready to roll whenever you are. Walking person of the standing seven. DB walking person. Notice that arm up in the air. Very important. That is your counterbalance. Without the counterweight, you can't do this. Legs are parallel, going up and down from the hip. You got a nice line across the pelvis. Feet are falling under her hips. This quarter example there, you want not to be stepping on the quarter. It's being light on the quarter. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. As always, pelvic tilt, great d depiction of pelvic tilt there and chin to throat. The knees are slightly bent. Putting the weight on the forefoot yet again, the quarter example. I'm going to really talk about what that means, that quarter there. All right, so gripping and holding the standing leg, hardest part of the exercise, believe it or not. You really want to get that inner thigh musculature involved with the gripping. We'll see how she moves her foot back. See how small that is, right? It's toe to instep. It's really only three or four inches in reality. Looks bigger in the video. To use a mirror, 
When you're in the mirror standing straight, you can see half your nose and half your body. As you veer off of that steady straight place, you see different parts of yourself in the mirror. There is our short, tight step. A little more clearly depicted. And that is our DB walking person. Okay, and with that, I'm going to do a little demo for us, and that is the quarter demo. So you want two of the U.S. Mint's best quarters. Nickels will do. Okay, and what we're going to do is come over here, and we're going to place those two quarters right about hip width on the floor. And if you've got a wooden floor, you can put it right on the same line, and you know you're lined up. Okay, <clears throat> take your foot, step over that, put that quarter right in the center of your heel. Alright, and we'll put that weight down on that quarter. If your knees are locked, the weight is going to be on the quarter. If you're standing somehow oddly, your weight is going to be possibly more on one quarter than the other. Okay, and I want you to take a minute, kind of assess. As you try to stand there still, feel that quarter. Is one more weighted? Is there a twist in your body? It really gives you a chance for feedback, okay? What we're going to try to do is really work on that first knuckle of the big toe controlling our weight. So I'm putting the monthly weight on the first knuckle of my big toe and shifting forward. And as I do, I come forward. And I can still feel that quarter under my heel, but I'm not putting pressure on it. And that's what that quarter exercise is all about. You put your feet, full, firm contact, gripping the floor, and see my quarter just dropped off. I leaned too far. I still want to have the quarter under my heel on the floor, again, just with a light touch. Sort of like when we talk about floating the nose and chin the throat. It's that soft contact, All right? So that's a little deeper on what we talk about when we're showing you that quarter example. If everybody wants to take a minute to work on that, I would really appreciate it. Because it's really part of setting the stance. And you'll, really, you'll feel if you've got your whole foot in grip with the floor and the heel is light, your thigh is engaged kind of 360 degrees all the way around a little bit. And it's that engagement of that thigh that we need to optimize. We need to maximize, right? You want that thigh clenching like you're clenching a fist and never going to let go. Because it's that thigh strength that keeps us from tipping side to side as we disengage the foot to move. All right. Is everybody kind of feeling that quarter example, right? Put the weight on it, lock the knees, unlock the knees take the weight off it, but still feel it, and feel that foot firm and level. All right. And I just wanted everybody to have that tactile experience because it really helps you set that position of the foot and knees and kind of ingrain it a little bit. And with that, we don't want to take all day, and we're going to move on and do our walking person with our fully engaged foot and leg. And with that, I throw over to Tiffany for a live demonstration. Okay, so just to kind of uh, add a little something extra, um, to keep your leg engaged when you're doing this exercise, you're gonna wanna feel these, uh, these adductor muscles here, these inner thigh muscles. This is what is gonna keep you from swaying from side to side. So your gripping leg, the one that's not moving, you really wanna feel engage. So yeah, you can almost pinch the muscles of your inner thigh with your hand like that and then mm -hmm. tighten your muscles to spread your hand apart. That gives you a good kind of sense of what you're trying to do because there's not there's contraction without movement happening. Mm -hmm. Back to you Tiff, sorry. All right so I'll give you a little side view so you can kind of see how there's a little lean going on here. Um, I am going to have my left side stabilized. So I'm going to have my left arm up, chin to throat is on, feet are hip width apart, pelvic tilt. Make those knees soft. 
get this little skier jump position on where you are. That is how we were just going with the quarter underneath our heel. You'll find yourself a little bit leaned forward. That's where you want to be. Now, keeping this leg, this whole left side is tight. Pelvic tilt is tight. It's going to keep us from moving. Just a little tiny step back and then forward. And you might get a little off there. Just get back into position. Little tiny step and bring back. And remember, the essence of the whole exercise is to control the lateral shift. It's not a big giant step. All right. If I might focus on Matthew a little bit. Matthew, could you just turn to face the camera? I don't need to see your face or your whole body. Right there is good. And then as you reach that arm out, really reach for infinity with that arm. And then put all of your weight on your left foot and kind of grip your leg and foot and feel it be firm. Right? Now do a pelvic tilt, tighten those abs a little bit. And then try to just drop your right foot back two inches. Boom. That's a better one than I saw before. Did you feel that? A little bit of grip and holding. Perfect. Go ahead and work with that. Sink it in deeper into the mus muscle memory. I almost said muscle memory, that wascally wabbit. All right. Everybody feeling it? Anybody got questions, concerns, inputs, or comments? How would um, wearing socks affect this exercise? It would make it uh, this can be done socks, shoes, or otherwise. Um, the, the closer you are in contact to the ground, the more feel you have, the more... Uh, sensations and feedback are available a uh, bad pair of shoes is not good to do it in because then you're countermining the forces created by the bad pair of shoes so barefoot stocking foot not too far apart but no bad shoes all right tiff you want to give them another uh 10 cents worth there so i moved on to my other side I did a little knee pumps in between. Oh, it's a it's a tough one, but yeah, if you do have a mirror, it really helps because then you can kind of see how you're shifting. Maybe your hips are going this way, that way. Um, I always kind of have to remind myself that it's just this little. It's like your whole leg is its own thing, and you're really isolating to not like move open, to not move your hips with your leg. That is really what we're trying to like separate here. And you highlight a very important point there. The hinge point is the hip, not the knee, not the ankle, not the foot. The hinge point is the hip. So think of your leg of your almost think of your leg just kind of freely swinging under you, right? If you get really good at holding yourself, you'll be able to do that. Freely swing your leg under you without a lot of lean. I have a question. Uh, yeah. I feel super wobbly when I try to pull my leg back. Okay. Um, specifically on my, my, my left leg is stable. So it feels like okay. I need to do something prior to make it right. stronger. I'm a step ahead of you. I saw you sitting there and I was already planning to come around to you. Grab a chair. Hold on to the back of the chair. Grip your legs. Make the movement. Right, and then once you start to get a little bit more solid, you can go with the arm. Back away from it so you can kind of really put a little lean on it. Let it take some of the weight. Now pelvic tilt. Grip the pelvic tilt. Grip the right leg. Feel the forefoot holding all of your weight on the right leg and move the left leg just a tiny bit back. You know what? I think that's what I have a hard time with is putting my weight on my forefront I start to even feel wobbly right then. All right, well then that's your threshold. That's where you start to gain mastery and make it stronger and better. So, so, so little. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a little disappointing because it's so little, but it really progresses fast. You do this, take time out of your day a couple times just to do this a few times a day and it will start to take root. And within a few weeks, you'll be up to the using the hand extended. All right. Anybody else? 
Um, I just, this reminded me of, we did a Instagram post on this and we did hashtag flaw awareness, which really that this is that exercise that brings out your flaws and you know, the first step to getting rid of your flaws is to noticing them. So if you can look in your mirror and see how yourself might do this, or you might go this way, if you're not fully staying in this like half position on the mirror, it's okay. It's like, it's good. It's just becoming aware that you have some, you know, aberrations that are happening. And then you just don't take, you know, you take it a, a step further, you, like just like we did with Ange. And maybe you don't take such a big step because that's what's getting you off balance. But yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. That was a, something to remind me of that. All right. Yes, very good. There's many elements. We could do this exercise 10, 20 times in a row, and we will. And there'll be little elements of different instruction each time. And that's a good thing mm -hmm. because it gives us a fuller appreciation for it over time. All right, that is our walking person in our quarter demo, and I hope that all kind of uh, made something click for you guys a little bit. It, some of our, we got veterans and we got new people, so I'll be very interested to hear after how things went for folks. And on from walking person, we're going to go back to standing calves, and Tiffany's going to show us some modifications that get your foot get your lower calf and your Achilles tendon a little bit more and allow us to not just stretch straight up and down the center of the calf, but to get a little bit more of the inside or the outside of it. And with that, wherever you do your standing calf, go ahead and set yourself back up. And Tiffany, take it away. Um, I have my family's backgammon suitcase. <laughs> That's what I'm going to use. And... You can use a book, maybe like a big cooking book could help here. You can, if you have some steps, uh, that'll, that'll work as well. Um, I just moved this position so you can kind of see how we begin here. So same kind of wall setup. You want it to be stable. And first we're going to place the ball of our foot on the edge of whatever you're using. Um, and this one isn't so much about using your arms. I mean, you can use them, but it's more about bending your knee. And right now my calves are really tight. Um, so it's a little bit more difficult for me to get my knee bent here. You can also change the height of whatever you're using. Um, my calves are really tight. So what I was gonna say was that usually you would feel this in your Achilles. Right now I'm feeling it here. So I'm just still just gonna work that. And you can also, instead of just bending your knee, you can also just lean forward, lean your body over your leg. And breathing into it. And when you're doing stretches, one very important general concept is a lot of times when somebody goes and do, to do a stretch, there's a really tight line in their body. Say you're stretching your quadriceps and <clears throat> well, let's say we're stretching our calves because we're stretching our calves. And some of you might find that you got a really tight line going right up the inside of the calf. And you naturally, without even thinking about it, you turn your body a little bit. You make some kind of adjustment so that that tight line doesn't receive that much of the force. Well, that's exactly the opposite of what you want to do. You want to find the tightest line and apply force to it. That tight line will elongate, get stretched, become more pliable, and you'll run into the next tightest line. Matthew, if at all possible, just step back from your wall a little bit. Both feet. Oh, sorry, there you go. Yeah, and then you're less crammed up into the wall. You follow me? There you go. You look much more free moving there. All right, Tiff, take them on to phase two. All right, phase two. Get back off a little bit. And you're going to just slide your foot down, slide your toes. The ball of the foot now is towards the floor. And we are stretching between the ball of our foot and the tips of our toes. So you'll kind of see that like, like my pinky kind of falls off here, but I'm just gonna focus on 
the big toe and the pinky will get to after this. So that same idea, the way you're going to push into it is bend your knee, move your body closer to the wall and go at it slow. We're not really used to stretching these muscles very much. If you're really flexible, you might find that you can get your heel a little bit up off the floor as your knee goes forward and that's okay. Just don't right. do that too fast because it will pluck some strings. Let's say, uh, Sam, will you do a, a 60 second and then let me know when we get to 30 and then for those who want to or are able to, we will lift our heel up. Okay, starting now. Let's uh, do a little bit of breathing focus Thanks. here while yeah. we do this. I'm going to count out some breaths, okay? So we're going to, everybody get ready to take an inhale breath. And we're going to inhale for one, two, three. Holding, two, three. Exhale, two, three. Nice big full inhale, two, Those 30 three. Seconds. Exhale, two, three. All right, Tiff, Shh, give that heel lift a little try, folks. Tiff's going to do it, see where she gets. All right, it's really subtle. Don't go at it quickly. Just slowly lift it. It might be just that corridor space, you know, and that's, that's a lot here. So just go at it slow. Breathe into it. And that's a minute right there, 60 seconds. All right. Push out of that. Oof. Yeah, let's come out of that. See how she, she goes immediately into shake it out, bending and wiggling those toes. That's giving relief, restoring yeah. blood flow into an area that was just recently deprived of it. Very important aspect of this. All right. And lastly, she's going to show us some long calf stretch that we did. Well, why don't we, uh, where are we at? We're at 1257. Why don't we switch to the long leg calf stretch, and then we'll stick around and do the other side a little bit. Okay. So we'll stay on the same leg. Okay. Switch to long leg. Just gonna get, we're not going to use the prop anymore. We're going back to the long stretched out stance that we did previously. We're going to show you a couple variations in that one. So back to our calf stretch here. Um, like kind of how I said earlier, like my outer calf is extremely tight. So, you know, there's ways you can modify this by moving the front of your foot ever so slightly out. And that way you can get a little bit of the outer calf into it. Still think about your heel being driven into the ground, but now you just have a different angle on your foot instead of this way, it's a little bit out. So you can do that. You can also move it in this way. Towards your midline. Tiffany highlights a great example there. I said earlier that we're all tight in different places. We all have different types of tightness. Um, Tiffany has a particular tightness on the outside of her left calf as it's related to her sciatic condition. We don't have to go into details there, but that's one way people are tight in different places from one another. Usually their physical experience, uh, the environments that they are raised in, um, injuries they might have had. There's a bunch of factors that play into this. But to know it and be aware of it and find it and work through it is always the answer. All right. So that brings us to the end of that one side leg, whichever side you guys were doing in the audience. Let's switch to the other and uh, we'll do a minute on the f minute on the uh, ball of the foot, a minute on 30 seconds on the toes, and then another minute on the long leg, and we'll be out of here. All right, so ball of foot. Sam, if you're on the timer, we can right, even do this. The timer for one minute. Yeah, all right, thank you very much. So first, we're just going to 
keep the heel down and stretch go forward putting force into the stretch and then at about the 30 second mark we can start trying to maybe lift the heel or push push the envelope a little everybody's looking good right so we also want to square your hips put your pelvic tilt on get those lines all good and the breathing. You'll notice that as you exhale your breath, you get more release into the stretch than when you're inhaling. Inhaling tends to tighten us up a little bit. There's one minute. All right. So shake that off real quick. Slide the forefoot down to the floor, toes up on your raised edge, and we'll finish off that part of the foot. Tiffany's giving us the demo there. Starting timer for 30 seconds. There's Tiffany showing us how it's done. Again, the breathing, the pelvic tilt, always being aware of base, right? Always remind yourself of base. And that's 30 seconds right there. All right, shaking that out real quick. Just throw the leg back. Right, you don't even have to move your block. You just set your forward leg, put your weight on it, set the other leg back, and bada boom. And it looks like Tiffany's doing a little bit of toe out version there, mm -hmm. which would probably run up the inside of her calf. Timer started for one minute. All right. Everybody's breathing. Everybody's tilting. That breath count is going one, two, three. Hold. Two, three. Exhale. Two, three. Probably about time to switch to turn your foot the other way. Still breathing, working into it. It's okay to make adjustments, right? You put four or five hours of total time into these, this calf stretching, you'll be able to drop right into the exact right position you want right away. You, right now it's new. There's a period we go through that I call hunting and pecking, right? That's You're hunting one right there. That's one minute. Right, beautiful. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, right now we're hunting and pecking to find the right place. Once that right place is established, we lock into it. So that is modified standing calves. You all want to do some shaking it out there. And we have made it through another show. I would like to thank you all very much for coming. And I want to congratulate you all very much for coming and participating and taking that one step forward toward yourself. We're here once a week, every week. Um, we will be going through a time change of the show as we go into a new July schedule. It's not going to be at noon anymore. It's going to be later in the day. We're still trying to nail down the exact right day. Um, but we hope most of you will be able to come with us for that. It's as people are getting back to work and schedules are changing. I think it's just going to be more effective for a larger audience a little bit later in the day. And what else are we going to do? Uh, we've got a lot of stuff on social media. You can get a workout every day if you just go to social media and click on three different posts and do what's suggested in that post, provided it's an exercise post. Um, that's on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. You know, just give yourself a little challenge. Do one or two a day. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one sessions available. We have live consultations. Our new web presence, which we're launching later in the week, will be great. It's a nice self-contained little environment for us all. Uh, use, the, use this routine. Come back to this class and use it. It's great for hygienic purposes, 
right? Keeping our movements nice and clean. It's great for combating flare-ups. It works as a morning stretch or a pre-run stretch. There's just lots of opportunity, lots of reason to do it, and none not to. It uh, doesn't take uh, money or product or special equipment at all. So it's just right there for us to make us stronger. And if there's any questions or concerns or anybody else wants to put in some final input, now is a great time for that. Um, I kind of wanted to bounce off and say um, about the Instagram, about the type of exercises we put on there. If you follow along and like you want to be prepared for next week, we post all of the videos uh, that you'll be doing next week to get a little taste of what it is sort of like like I remember being in school and you'd have to read the whole lab you know or you should read the whole recipe before you start the recipe before you start cooking so it's kind of like a little bit of extra just a little homework but I think it helps and it helps to get more out of your exercises and stretches if you kind of peek those a little bit yeah. yes <laughs> thank you very much for that Tiffany uh, every little bit of insight is really helpful because really what you're doing is you're coming into a process. What you're trying to do involves a process and process always has nuance and details that make it smoother and better. And that's really why we're here every week just to keep on. We can get you to get one little thing to stick each week you come and change one habit. You're on your way to change. So thank you all for coming. It's really much appreciated. And with that, I am going to say over and out.